All right, so I want to show you guys today what is becoming quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, like vintage style scopes, and that's the Lyman Alaskan. Uh, this Lyman Alaskan has quite the history behind it. Um, it was one of the first like really well well built scopes, especially made in America. So it was made from 1939 to 1957, I believe it was, and uh, it ended up gaining such a reputation that it served in the military as the M73, M82, and M83, I believe they were. Uh, all different variations, um, but that's what was on some of the later 1903A4 snipers and also M1C variants. So the M1 Grand Sniper version. But uh, I'm, I'll have an article down below that I wrote on this uh, Lyman Alaskan to kind of explain it for you. But this setup here is, it's a pretty sweet little, uh, it's, a, it's my 270. So it's pre-64 model 70, 1950 made. It's got the low comb stock, uh, the Brownells Latigo sling on it that I've just fallen in love with. I love how quick adjust, quick that sling adjusts. Um, red field mounts and then this Lyman Alaskan. So this is a straight two and a half power. It's got my favorite reticle in it, which is a target dot. Uh, not the most common found version of the Lyman Alaskan, but I'll flip it over here. So these Lyman Alaskans, they have, uh, so they're marked on sides there. You got all weather. Um, and what that was referring to, some, I believe the earlier ones didn't have caps on the scope, but then the later ones started to. So that kind of made it sealed. Um, it's got their address and it has Alaskan in this kind of like gold type print and then the serial number. So some of the serial numbers, if it has a B in front of the serial number, that means that that served for the United States Army or the government. So just keep an eye out for that if you see any of these scopes. These scopes are pretty pricey now. I believe they're running like anywhere between 250 and if you get one of the rare ones, they can go up like eight, 900 bucks. Um, and then if you find one that's actually military marked, sky's the limit on what you can get for it. But yeah, they're great scopes and actually, I don't know how, um, I think it's still a pretty good option now. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're not gonna have the low light capability you do with modern scopes, but it's still a great option. And there's actually a company, Hilux Scopes, that makes a reproduction of this. Then they, the way they advertise it is externally it's the same, but it's with modern day uh, glass and modern um, internal adjustments. So one of the things with this is you only have one inch it's one inch per click, so one MOA adjustment, which is kind of kind of big for today. We're used to quarter MOA and half MOA on most scopes. But yeah, this scope's pretty light with the with the scope rings. It weighs 12.45 ounces, so it's doesn't add much weight to the rifle. It's very low profile, so you can kind of use the same comb as when you're using open sights. But uh yeah, it got it has five inch eye relief too, so this was a very popular one to mount on Springfield 03s and Winchester 54s because you're moving that scope forward of the bolt handle if it was one that wasn't going to clear. Model 70, it's ground to clear, so it's not an issue, but I could have mounted it more forward if I wanted. I just liked its positioning right here. So yeah, the, the Model 70 with the Lyman Alaskan combination, actually Jack O'Connor had a similar setup to this. He didn't have it using the Redfield mounts. He had some of the early mounts, the Stife mounts that use the front dovetail and uh, the rear receiver um, peep sight holes. And it, it's a pretty cool little mount and I, it's a very vintage style. I'd like to get one for my Model 54 at some point and kind of mount a similar setup on it. But uh, yeah, this, this is gonna be my uh, little not quite a brush gun because it's 270, but I'm going to load some 150 grain bullets up for it and kind of use it as a sub 100 yard whitetail gun. I think it's going to be perform flawless in that in that realm. Uh, there's just something something about carrying like a classic setup like this uh, as opposed to a much larger scope. Like I'll show you the combination. Like that's that's what a modern Leopold would look like on there. So you can see the difference in size, but. Yeah, if you guys, any of you guys watching this have an Alaskan or have any cool stories about the Alaskan scope, leave uh, leave me a note down in the comments. I'd love to hear about it because they're just cool scopes and have a big history to them. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think and uh, I'll see you next time.